Well, good morning, guys. Welcome back. Another fine day at the off grid. <laughs> What do you guys think of your pumpkin spice? Is it good? Pumpkin's delicious, isn't it? You got some on your ear there. You got some pumpkin on your ear. Sorry, I'm bugging you. Anyways, enjoy that. Today is a uh, special day. It's a special day because there's like a honey-do list the size of my arm. And, I, and I've kind of been, I haven't been really putting it off. It's just kind of like everything kind of culminated into one particular day. It's been raining like cats and dogs out here. Everything's kind of, Filling up the pond, looks like it's right near its edge, which is kind of cool. It'd be great for hockey and whatnot. The primary objective of this is to button up a lot of the stuff that uh, I haven't been able to get to and winter's coming, as you guys know. First order of business is I'm actually gonna do some takeoffs at the uh, the A-frame because I want to uh, I want to build a deck because building a deck in the winter isn't cool. So we're gonna do that. And uh, also I've got some issues with the, uh, the actual A-frame glass, which, uh, as you guys may have known, I've cocked around uh, three sides of it and I didn't think I needed to do the top, but it's still leaking. So I'm thinking it's, you know, leaking from the top. Either capillary action is sucking the water up and down and around and it's it's leaking inside. So there's just a little bit of leaking. I'm, I'm gonna try to nip that in the bud sort of thing because I don't have that many days left where I can do it. I'll clean this guy off and then maybe in the afternoon when it's all completely dry, I can cock the top so it doesn't leak anymore. So the plan, the plan is to do the, uh, the front deck, do some material. I gotta actually mill that. And uh, we gotta deal with the pigs. So the pigs are going to market. Uh, that was their ultimate goal right from the get go was uh, raise them as food. And as you guys know, the price of meat has gone up astronomical. So that was a good investment. I hope we haven't really done the numbers or shaken out exactly how much it's cost. Uh, but uh, those are on the, on the list. So I've got to prepare the, uh, the cage or the transport vehicle to get them to where they've got to go. And uh, so yeah, there's a lot of stuff to do today, uh, but let's get started. Well, as you guys may know, I don't eat the best diet. I've got high fat, high sodium. It's not, it's not, it's not the most balanced diet. Fortunately, I found a healthy snack in Magic Spoon. Magic Spoon comes in a bunch of different flavors. They send you a variety pack of four different flavors. My favorite right now is Frosted. It's delicious. Try Magic Spoon's best-selling flavors in a four-flavor variety pack featuring cocoa, fruity, frosted, and peanut butter. Magic Spoon also offers other great flavors including cookies and cream, maple waffle, cinnamon, and blueberry. When you're eating a bowl of Magic Spoon, you don't have to feel like you're missing out anything because it's got all the great flavors of your childhood cereal. Magic Spoon tastes amazing. It's just like the cereal I used to eat when I was a kid, but it's good for you. It says here right on the box, high protein, keto friendly, gluten free, grain free, soy free, wheat free. So it's great for those who have food sensitivities or who are trying to improve their diets. Click the link below to get yourself a variety pack today and use the coupon code SELFRELIANCE to get you $5 off your first order, or you can use the link magicspoon.com slash selfreliance. And Magic Spoon is so confident in their product, they have a 100% money back guarantee, no questions asked. And for my Canadian and UK fans, they're now shipping. So click the link below and use the code SELFRELIANCE to get yourself $5 off your first order, or go to magicspoon.com slash selfreliance to get $5 off today. Mmm. I'm just gonna eat cereal all day. Mmm. Let's go back to work. I gotta finish my cereal first. So the plan is to blow off all the existing water that's there, give it the afternoon to dry out, and then I can come around and cock the other sides of them. Come hell or high water, I'm gonna make this thing stop leaking. So like I was saying before, what I've done is I've actually cocked all three sides. So this side, the bottom side, and the upside, or the other side. I haven't cocked this top corner yet because I figured everything would just kind of sheet down and then just keep carrying on out. But what's occurring is it's actually going this way and then that way and then back around and it's coming out <clears throat> the side. Well, some of it's coming out the side, 
but some of it's going down this channel and out the side, like through the bolts that are attaching the panel together. So I think if I do the top side, I will be able to get the, uh, the leaking under control. So this is what I've got, RTV silicone. It's uh, like bulletproof sort of stuff. It's uh, industrial, industrial and construction. What does that mean? It's like industrial and commercial, but it's industrial and construction, whatever that means. Anyways, this is kind of silicone. They would uh, seal up skyscrapers, the glass on skyscrapers on. So it's designed for this stuff is not cheap. Um, I think I'm in it for like 200 bucks to caulk the windows, which is crazy, but you know what? I, I hate water infiltration. So hopefully this will fix it and we won't get any more water in here and uh, you know, push come to shove. Um, we can always do a steel roof, but I don't really want to do that. So I'm going to throw all the technology and manpower at it right now and see if I can see if I can fix it. So the other thing on the honey to do list is the uh, front porch here or the deck or the little landing area. So that's uh, that's priority right now, like I said. So I'm just doing measurements here to make sure I've got the right size and I'm gonna go up to the mill and mill some stuff. So I'm thinking about a four foot, five foot deck with a center staircase, allows me to get up, allows me to have chairs on both sides, kind of like relaxing. You can look up, you know, on the view, kind of sit in front of your cabin, it's always nice. <laughs> So my pigs aren't going to market just as of yet, but my idea is to get them acclimatized to transport. So the idea is to set this thing up here and they can kind of come in and out as they please. Perhaps I'm gonna feed them in here for the next little while in order to get them used to travel. They're not, uh, they're not the traveling pigs, but uh, hopefully they get used to it quickly. So I, what I did was I took a bunch of um, cedar trees that we had laying around here the shorties and the not so thick ones and i just made a flat edge on them and that's what's going to be my joists on the front part of the cabin and uh yeah that should work out good so uh we got don don's here for the afternoon shift how many layer day is it today actually it's uh multiple um, is, is it because your blood's not thick enough yet it's it's, right. it's it's not uh not used to this yet not used to this it is true it's this is like it's it's kind of dropped really cold. It's kind of damp. It's been raining for a lot. So yeah, it's a, how many layers? How many layers you got? One, four? I think I have four. Four layer day. So there was a company that reached out to me the other day and uh, they were like, we want to send you some heated vests. And I was like, well, if you're going to send me one, you got to send Dawn one. So it's really cool. It's uh, FT Vogue is the name of it. And it's got a little button here and it's got, uh, I'll show it anyways. It's got like three settings. You can go red, which is really hot. And then you go, uh, blue which is medium and then green is cool but it's still warm i've got it on green right now because it's about a couple layer day so what's really cool about these vests is that you still have your arms to work with you don't have those bulky jackets does that fit this is good it's a large it's a men's a large, large. Yeah. and i got t-shirt sweater and uh hoodie so oh geez here, here let me turn you on you're like an oh there Got the red, you got the full, red. Full. I got full. So full I want heat. you to, we'll check back in a couple of minutes to see how it is. But yeah, so it comes, it comes with this little battery pack, which is kind of cool because you can charge your phone with it. Uh, it's got a type C in type C input, which is the charging. And then you got USB output. So I guess you can charge your phone as well, which is kind of cool. The back shoulder area, neck, shoulder blades, very warm. That's cool. And uh, actually the whole back too. And the nice thing is it's long, it doesn't pull up. Right. Like I said, I milled up the things and I've got, uh, I got the planking, which is a spruce tree that uh, we had dropped off from JL's tree service. They dropped them off and we've been building with them ever since, which is quite cool because we actually diverted that uh, tree from the chippa. We made it useful. So we got our deck boards all milled up. We've got our structure milled up. We should be good to go. So the plan on the front of this thing is not actually to dig in the holes. We're gonna put some, we got some pavers. We're gonna set the pavers down, put a couple of posts down, extend our framing out and then uh, we'll have a deck. So the consensus on parging was that uh, we should and we shouldn't. So it was half do it and half don't. So I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna wait. I've got the, uh, the sand, you saw we just moved it. Uh, and that's uh, the sand actually mixed with the Portland in order to parge this thing. But I think I'm gonna let it, I'm gonna let it weather. I, like it, it's rained a couple times and water hasn't come in. I'm probably gonna seal the little bottom here 
in order to prevent water from actually getting in. And uh, there was a useful tip to actually cut a groove on the bottom of this little drip bed so the water doesn't kind of flow back and touch my siding. So I'm gonna do that. But as it sits, the vote is to leave it. And I'm gonna leave it. It's easier to leave it than it is to change it once I've done it. There are many different ways to build a deck. In this deck in particular, what I did was I started by cutting my ledger board the width of the cabin, then I fastened it onto the front, and then I proceeded to add joists on each side, and then I used a small stick in order to level them, and then I added the front board. Traditionally, when you would be building a deck, you'd be using pressure-treated lumber. And what that is, is it's a, it's a, it's a spruce that they inject all sorts of crazy chemicals in it and it lasts for uh, many, many years, 20, 30 years. I'm opting instead for a more natural product, which is cedar. Cedar has natural oils in it that lasts a really long time. Anytime you build a uh, you know cedar fence or a cedar deck, it, uh, it weathers and it, uh, it's bug resistant, rot resistant, water resistant, moisture resistant, resistant to pretty much everything. And it's got that nice gray patina when it's done, when it's weathered. That's what I like about it. So this is what I have, this is what I'm gonna use. And uh, I think it's gonna turn out great. Now, normally what you would do is you'd set your posts below the frost line. And here in Canada, you wanna go down at least four feet. But in this case, because my deck isn't that far off the ground, what I opted for instead was to put a couple of patio pavers down, kind of like little feet. When it's attached to the actual cabin, it'll kind of, it'll stay on the cabin and then float at the front. I don't imagine it's going to heave that much in the forest. The frost level doesn't go that deep in the forest, so I didn't feel it necessary to actually dig holes this time. And we'll see it, which ones last longer, whether or not the posts in the ground or the posts on patio papers. I nailed my post temporarily on both corners and then notched out the middle post in order to give it a little bit more support. At a later date, I'm gonna add lag bolts through the structure in order to attach it to the, uh, to the posts themselves. Ideally, when you're framing a deck, you're using galvanized nails in order for them, to, or prevent them from rusting. And once my posts are set, what I do is I actually use my chainsaw and cut them off level to the underside of the deck. Once the basic structure of the deck was completed, I used my tape measure in order to ensure it was square. So if you measure from one corner to the other, and then from the one corner to the other, you could determine if it's square. If those numbers match up, that means you're square. And you could adjust it incrementally until it is. Well guys, I think we're onto something here. We've used what otherwise would be scrap wood and we've flattened the one side and we've used them for joists. And as you can see, they're like five or six times the width of joists. And they're a piece of wood that traditionally would be discarded or mulched up. And did I mention they're cedar? So these guys, these joists, in my opinion, will probably last forever because they're up high and dry and, and they're gonna be covered and protected. Obviously this is not something you can do at your house due to uh, building codes perhaps for like a cabin in the forest or something like that. It's a viable solution, uh, you know, not having joists or even spending the time to, to mill up. There's a lot of waste whenever you use a sawmill, but with this one, there's like, there's like no waste. There's, you know, you've got one scab and then you got a, you know, a joist this way. You could do it even longer if you wanted to, because it is pretty much an intact tree. This is how they used to do it back in the day. Like, you know, you build your house, they would flatten one side and they'd use them as joists on the ceilings and, and, and frame in your roof structure. Anyways, this is our deck. As you can see, we've got our, got our joists in. All we gotta do now is our decking, which we're gonna put in loosely and then uh, screw it off and then square it up and then we're pretty much done. All we need is a step at the front, which is, which is I think we're gonna use a giant rock. I think I know where there's some rocks. So let's get the decking on, we'll go from there. I think it looks pretty good. What do you think? I think it's, it's great. The only thing we need is a step. And I got Don, he's going to the upper side where there is uh, the rocks, same place where I got the rock for the uh, sauna. 
there's some big rocks there. We need like a 12 inch thick rock by about three feet wide. I don't know if we'll be able to carry that, but we're gonna give it a whirl. He's, he's just on the hunt right now. I'm just gonna mention that uh, we got our EcoFlow Delta out here and we uh, run in our compressor for our nail gun and uh, we started off at 99% battery and we're at 88%. So that actually worked pretty darn good. Um, if you had to lug a you know a gas powered generator over here and have that thing running and making noise and whatnot, it would have just been a drag. Don had to drive all the way around because there's only one trail there, but I can drive. I can actually walk right through the cedars. And if, I'll take you guys for a little walk if you guys are curious. As you can see, it is sunny out today, but uh, the sun's not quite getting through. You can see the back of the A-frame. You see the sun kind of hits it, and uh, we've got to thin these trees out, which is my goal. It's been my goal all along to kind of thin these trees out. So this is the kind of backside. The camera does a poor job at kind of showing slope, but if you can imagine, this is a very, this is a pretty steep grade. I want to show you what happens when you get a forest that's too, um, it's too packed. I don't know if any of you guys can walk through there, but I sure can't. That's, uh, that's a lot of trees and they're all mashed together. It looks like something out of a weird, scary movie. Probably at some point was like a, like a downdraft or something like that, a little tornado, mini tornado and it kind of shoved all the trees down. You, can, you, can see, you can't even, you can't walk through there. You can't, well, I guess if you crawl, you can kind of, you can see they're all bent over. It's because they're, they're, too, they're too tight together. They grew too close together. There's not enough nutrients for them to kind of grow independently and strong. So they kind of all folded over. Like imagine if I can't get through that, do you think a big, like big game animal is gonna go through there? Not likely. So as you can see, we're at the edge of the cedars now and we're getting into the pines now. All right, we're almost there. Don's on the, on the side of Narnia over there where the sun shines through. I think it's one, but it could be two. Is it a monster? Do you think it would carry it? Okay. It might be able to. Drag that bad boy. That's actually not a, it's nice and flat. Or there's that one. We may have to do two. Maybe do two. Actually two wouldn't be bad. I think, what do you think this stuff was? Like there's, there's definitive piles. Like there's one pile, two piles. Maybe they clear the field or something? Look at this one. It's Such a tripping one. That one's gonna stay there. Who's more, it's a great marker. Who's more stubborn, that rock or Don? <laughs> oh, uh oh, Don more stubborn than that rock. Shark tooth. Big old shark tooth. Selected a couple of rocks. Don's just gonna grab them, he's gonna bring them by. They may or may not work, we're gonna try them out. One's got a flat surface and then a round bottom, so we're thinking maybe digging it in a little bit, the round part, and then seeing if we can make it flat on the top. But we can't find a rock that's big enough to do it just with one single rock, so we're gonna probably use two rocks. That'll give us the front, hopefully, that we need. Otherwise, I put uh, I put some feelers out to some, some buddies that are nearby to see maybe they got a nice flat rock. We'll see, we can always change it out. Have the ornamental rocks if they just don't work and uh, go from there. You gotta use what you got, right?
There you go. Does that work? Hello? Yeah. I'm stuck. You're stuck? I gotta put a handle on still. Here. You wanna come out? Mm -hmm. Alright. Come on out. Well guys, I found the deal of the century. I was at the local hardware store and uh, it turns out end of season sales are on now. Nobody buys uh, Adirondack chairs or Muskoka chairs in the fall. I guess they're just waiting for winter, but uh, lucky for me, they're on sale for a really good deal. I, I, can't even, I can't even put gas in my chainsaw for the price they were, so I ended up picking up two, and now I got some chairs. This is actually pretty comfy. They're rated for 250 pounds, so hopefully I just lay off the cookies. There's even a cup holder, look at that. They had, uh, they had bigger ones for 350 pound ones. So ultimately I've been waiting for the rain to come. Today was supposed to rain. It looks very, it's, it's overcast. And I don't want to finish the inside without knowing it's watertight. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping for rain. <laughs> it's last time, uh, usually I'm hoping for no rain. There's a lot of uh, wind blowdowns, like dead landing, laying on the ground. It's kind of like a mess in here. Um, so what I would like to do is actually take the opportunity once it does rain to light myself up a little, uh, on my little fire, clean up fire. The other good thing about plastic chairs is that you can wipe them off. They're easy to dry, so you don't have to, you know, sit sit down in a wooden chair and then soak up all the water into your pants. So these are just like wipe, wipe, and we're good. We're good to go. We got dry seats, especially in the forest because the dew in the morning, you kind of want to, yeah, wipe it off. Just on time, or actually a couple hours late, the weather has moved in and it started raining. It seems to be holding up really good. The rain seems to be staying out of the cabin. There might be a little bit of a minor leak at the front, but I think I know where that is. I have to wait for it to dry again and then try to go again. My brother, my brother is here. He's going hunting in the back 40 and he's, uh, what are you doing? I'm smoking myself what? so the deer can- You're gonna catch fire. The You're deer, like- Deer can't smell me. It's a good- <laughs> a good way to get rid of your human scent. Are you on fleece? Like, no, that's not, I thought no. it was fleece. Uh, yeah, I'd be, I'd be on fire right You'd be, now. be on fire. So is this fireproof? This is, I actually saw, I didn't really see him walking down the trail. He looked like a blur, like he, he like a predator? Smudge. Like the predator. Smudge. But then you got the, the red, orange yeah. shoulders. That's well, what kind of gave you away. The deer can't see that, so. You can't see the orange shoulders? I'm gonna try to shoot a deer. You probably scared them all away with the construction. No, 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 no. We didn't, we just did natural <laughs> fire sounds today. Well, I'm gonna go over there anyway. Yeah. Well, I've, I've been hearing, I've been hearing gunshots. Yeah. But I'm bow hunting. All oh, right. Why is there gunshots then? Because they're getting ready for next week. Oh. I'm okay. ready for next week too. Okay. You think you're gonna, you're gonna? I say I you're. Gonna, are you gonna catch one? But that's not the right words. So you don't say catch. You say get bag kill. No, no. Some, not, some people say harvest. Harvest. There I we go. I just say kill because that's what's happening. Okay. I don't know. I haven't seen a deer back there yet. Mm. <laughs> well, worst case scenario, you're gonna have some pork. Or get wet, because it's raining. Pork. Did you say it was raining? I oh, said it was raining. Pork. Yeah, we, we were waiting for the rain. We, we actually, the reason why we had a fire today was because we were anticipating rain all day. It's coming now. Yeah, so it's gonna just start deluge. <laughs> no, it's supposed to, it's supposed to rain hard and then taper off. It feels like it's snowing out here. It's cold. It's, it's almost time to get the deer for the winter. <laughs> if it happens. Well, good luck. All right. As, I, as you guys can see, our, our fire is uh, is burning. Chris is gonna go sit in a tree until dark. Look at him go. There he goes. Look at, he just kind of fades away. He matches the tractor with that orange. Yeah, see, gone. <laughs> the snap, crackle, pop is traditionally when you're burning any kind of softwood. So what, what 
what uh, what we're burning today is cedar, the cedar deadfall that was laying on the ground. So you can see kind of we've cleared this area here, which was all kind of wind blowdowns, possibly from like 10 years ago. The stuff doesn't rot here. It just kind of, if it's not touching the ground, like it just kind of stuck, it'll just, uh, it'll just sit there forever. So anything that was usable, we actually saved because I am planning on building something else with the, uh, the cedar chunk. Uh, and then over on this location over here, we kind of cleared everything was kind of leaning up against. There's some high value timber. These are cherry trees, which are, I'd like to keep, let them grow. So we've kind of cleared them of the stuff that was leaning on them. And you can see how thick it gets, branch. You can see how thick it gets over here. Again, this is stuff we haven't quite cleared yet. It's kind of cool, but like there's some logs here I've saved. We'll pull them apart because they are still solid. Like I said, cedar doesn't rot. That no, does rot, it just takes a really long time. There's actually a neat little pile here of, um, I think there used to be either a farmer's field or when they cleared the area, they kind of piled all the rocks here. And this is like a historical site. It's not a historical site. It's like a historical rock pile where they, where they would have piled the rocks and then the tree grew out and then the tree fell over. And there's a pile of rocks which are kind of like unearthed and they're actually sitting up on top of the stump which is kind of cool. Here Don, you wanna, it's a fancy rock. Oh wow, thank you. Isn't that cool? Like what do you think that is? I have no idea, quartz? I think it's quartz. Quartz? I'm sure somebody will tell us. Look at that, like, doesn't it look kind of cool? No, oh, broke it. I broke it. It looks like quartz. <laughs> Early morning on the day of, well, it's the final day. These little guys are going to market, and uh, so we put the pen over there to get them kind of used to going in and out. We haven't fed them yet this morning, so we're gonna lure them into the transport carrier. But first, we gotta put their makeup on, and by makeup, I mean uh, we have to put uh, we have to put a number on. So they, uh, they have a pig trace ID number, and uh, what that does is identifies the uh, the pigs. And you got to notify the transport, the pig ID transport people that you're transporting pigs. So that's what we've done. Uh, you can opt for ear tags. Uh, those cost money. This guy pretty much lasts forever. So we just mark them and then uh, they go off to market. So my brother, my brother, the Wooded Beardsman, opted to, uh, he was going to do this for me if I didn't get all my ducks in a row to begin with. Because you can do these at home. But uh, I don't know, for the, uh, for what it costs and the aggravation and the proper processing and the cleaning and whatnot. It's uh, it's almost easier if you have somebody that'll do it. Uh, to just kind of pay them, pay them to do it. So that's the uh, that's the plan today. Get these guys on the trailer and get them off on their final journey. Circle of life, right? Yeah. Hey, go in there. Hey, go in there. In. In. In the box. Come on. In. You gonna go in? In. Come on. Come on. Go in. Go in. in. Up the ramp. So what's your plan? We are going to lure them in with some scraps from last night. We have some eggs from Lena's breakfast. And they really like those. So, let's see if we can get them in. You think they're gonna get it? Come on. I gotta shut the door. Wait, 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 wait. Get in the box. Okay. All the foods in there. Go get it. What are you doing there? Get in the box. I 
Grandpa, you made me a bed, he says. Okay, so the original plan with these pigs was to, uh, you know, acclimatize them to the, uh, the transporter. But what we were doing is we were feeding them in the transport. We were giving them treats and whatnot. And uh, as it turned out, one pig really likes the transporter and it would come in and out as it, as it felt like it wanted to. And uh, we had one pig that was uh, particularly stubborn and that wouldn't go in. So we tried to coax it in a couple of times with uh, food. We kept adding food to the carrier and uh, it didn't seem to want to go in. So, uh, well, we went to plan B, which uh, involved adding skids and then kind of shrinking the space where they were, uh, they were kind of hanging out and kind of getting them in. But what was happening is the, uh, the pig would take its nose and then it would root underneath the skid and push it up. So uh, we consulted with a, a couple of neighbors that have done this before, and they indicated that plywood is probably best because they can't get their nose underneath it and push it up because it just kind of slides off the plywood. So they recommended if we couldn't get them in, what you do is you put a bucket on their head and uh, pigs tend to back up because they don't want their uh, their head in a bucket. So uh, we didn't have to resort to the bucket method. We managed to get them on just by by sheer sheer brute force. And uh, as you guys know that uh, pigs are very vocal and uh, they are very stubborn. So uh, we ended up kind of pushing them on and uh, we got them on the trailer after all. And uh, yeah, on their way. Put yourself here. Get the door reached. Hi. <laughs> That's it, that's all I can do. That's it, that's it. Okay. Come on, back up, baby. Okay. I know, back okay? up. Yeah. Back up. So, I got him. Okay, go over. Tight. There, he's in. Go. Ah, yeah! Hit the bottom, hit the bottom. Hang on, they're not going to Yeah, they will. They can kick the... If they bend it, they'll kick it out. All right guys, well we got the pigs all loaded up now, so we're on our way to the abattoir. So if you guys are curious on how much meat we get out of these two pigs, um, join me on the next one and hope you enjoyed this one.